when you're using a switch on the input of a logic circuit to be able to set the input either low or high when you push the switch, how do you determine the value of pull up or pull down resistor to use along with the switch? The input of a logic circuit needs to see either a high or low, which will be VCC or ground for that circuit. So if you want the switch to present a logic low when you close it, you'll need a pull up resistor to VCC so that when the switch is not closed, the input is at a guaranteed high state. If you want the switch to present a logic high when closed, you need a pull down resistor to guarantee a logic zero when the switch is open. Sometimes the choice between a switch to ground or VCC is arbitrary, but usually push buttons on logic circuits are connected to ground and there's an associated pull up resistor. One example where you would need a pull down with a switch to VCC would be if you have a chip that has an active high reset pin and you want to be able to push the button to reset the chip. So since you need a logic high to reset the chip, you need a pull down to keep the chip out of reset and running most of the time. Then when you push the button, you present the logic high momentarily and reset the chip. If this is an act of low reset, you would need a pull up and then a switch to ground. Whichever configuration is used, let's just look at pull up resistors for now. The resistor value needed is going to be calculated between a certain minimum and certain maximum value. Usually between 10k and 100k is used, but there's some instances where special considerations may have to be looked at. For the minimum resistance, one limiting factor requiring a certain minimum resistance value would be the fact that when the switch is closed, the resistor is essentially across the power supply as a load, so we have to make sure that the current flowing through this resistor isn't so high that it causes an excessive power dissipation more than the resistor package can handle. Similarly, the switch contacts are going to have a maximum current capability, so we also have to make sure the current through this resistor and switch network doesn't exceed the ratings of the switch itself. And depending on the logic family in use, there may be other minimum resistance requirements. For example, if you're using the regular 7.4 or the 7.4S series of chips, where they have emitters of the transistors directly at the inputs, as opposed to diodes directly at the inputs, those transistors can get damaged if you have an excessive input voltage. So you have to use a minimum resistance value to help protect the inputs if the input voltage is too large. But we're going to keep things more simple, so we're not going to use these logic families in these examples. In determining the maximum resistor value that should be used, that comes into play when the switch is open, so the only circuit path is the resistor to the input of the logic circuit. And whether it's a pull up or a pull down, there's going to be a certain amount of current flow through the input pin. Whether it's a TTL style digital circuit, or a DTL with diodes on the input, or CMOS inputs, there may be milliamps of current flow through the input pin when using these kinds of gates. Even when using high impedance CMOS, there still will be some leakage current, typically a maximum of maybe one microamp, but it's still relevant. With the switch open and a leakage current through the input, that current is going to go through the pull up or the pull down resistor, resulting in a voltage drop across that resistor. And that's going to change the input voltage level seen by the digital circuit. So the larger the resistor for a given leakage or input current, the larger the voltage drop and the farther away this input voltage is going to be from your desired high or low. So we need to figure out what's the maximum safe resistor value we can actually use to guarantee the logic level we want. For that, we have to look at the data sheet and see what are the guaranteed logic high recognized input voltage levels and guaranteed logic low recognized input voltages. That way we'll know maybe 2 volts or greater is safe as a logic high or maybe we need 4 volts or greater to guarantee a logic high. So we look at this in the data sheet and then we look at the worst case input current or input leakage current which may be different between a logic high and a logic low on the input. So we look it up for each case, 
Then we use Ohm's law to figure out the resistance value for a given worst case input pin current that will give us a valid logic high or logic low based on the voltage drop across the resistor in each case of pull up and pull down. So let's go through an example. If we look at 74LS series, which is a 5 volt part, an input voltage of at least 2 volts or higher is a logic high valid input. And for a logic low, the voltage has to be 0.8 volts or less. So for a pull up, we want at least 2 volts on the input, and VCC is 5 volts, so 5 minus 2 is 3. We're allowed to have 3 volts dropped across this resistor from 5 and still see a logic high. Now we need the input current through this pin when we are trying to give a logic high. Looking at the input current for a logic high presented at the input, we will assume we're not trying to overdrive the input at 7 volts, so a typical input, the input current will be maximum 20 microamps. So the maximum resistor for a pull-up on a 7.4 LS would be 5 volts minus 2 volts for a logic high divided by 20 microamps worst case input current and that gives us 150k maximum pull-up resistance. But of course that's right on the margin of the minimum voltage for a logic high so we wouldn't want to actually use 150k we would probably want to make a decision like if this is a logic high at 5 volts VCC maybe I want to see at least 4 volts so that means there's a 1 volt drop across the resistor to end up with 4 so if I change the calculation now it looks like a 50k resistor pull up would make sense probably a 47k as a standard value and that would be 0.1 milliamps when the switch is pressed and we have 5 volts across the 47k resistor. And current squared times resistance, the power dissipation in that resistor, 0.5 milliwatts. So that should be well within the power handling capability of many resistor packages. And if it's a battery powered circuit, 0.1 milliamps, 100 microamps, for a momentary push button, let's say, could be considered low current, but there may possibly be another consideration depending on what kind of switch is used. Some switches have a wetting current requirement. You have to give a minimum current to break through any surface oxidation that builds up on the contacts. If you don't provide enough current and you start getting this buildup, pressing the switch may not make electrical contact. So for example, if we look at some of these tactile switches, this particular miniature switch can handle up to 50 milliamps of current, and it also needs a minimum current of one milliamp. So now, if we make this a 4.7K resistor, now we have one milliamp of current when the switch is closed and the resistor is across the power supply, with one milliamp through the switch contacts as required. So then we'd have to look at, well now, if it's a battery powered application, are we drawing too much current or otherwise? Can we keep the current low with 47K and just choose a different switch that does not have this low of a minimum current? If we look at a CMOS example and at the same time a Schmidt trigger example, we'll use the data for VCC 4.5 volts because it's closest to five. So at close to 5 volts, the voltage level that we'll recognize as a guaranteed logic high for 7.4HC would be 3.15 volts. Depending on the part and depending on the operating temperature, an input that is 1.55 volts may register as a logic high, but for sure when you get to 3.15 it should see a logic high. So for a pull-up, this needs to be at least 3.15 volts and now for the leakage current on a CMOS input the input current worst case across temperature would be 1 microamp so operating at 5 volts we have 5 minus 3.15 volts divided by 1 microamp and that's the maximum resistor value we should be using as a pull up to make sure we can see a valid logic high here and that gives us 1.85 megs of pull-up resistance maximum. 
but that's a relatively high impedance, and the higher the impedance, the more susceptible to picking up stray noise. So we'd want to reduce the pull-up now that we know we can safely use almost 2 megs. We can also use anything lower, and 100k is a common value used on CMOS. So if we use 100k as a pull-up, we have a 0.1 volt drop across that resistor. So if this is 5 volts VCC, we have 4.9 volts on our logic high with this 100k pull-up. So those are some of the considerations when choosing a pull-up or a pull-down with a switch on a digital logic input, reasons why you might need a pull-up versus a pull-down configuration, and how to figure out a minimum and a maximum resistance value to use, depending on what your design requirements are. I'll put links in the description to any relevant app notes or other websites where I found useful information. That's all for now.